Venetoclax-based regimens have demonstrated convincing efficacy in phase three trials in both treatment naive first line settings as well as relapse refractory settings. Uh, some of the data that I'm presenting at IWCLL this year is looking at venetoclax-based treatment in patients who are treated in a routine clinical practice at a tertiary center, but off trial and evaluating those outcomes and what impacts those outcomes across the three most commonly identified or encountered scenarios being first line or treatment naive relapsed, but BTKI naive, so not having previously seen a BTK inhibitor, and then relapse setting with prior exposure to a brood and tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Uh, looking at those it, in our cohort, uh, utilizing the Mayo Clinic CLL database, we had 155 patients altogether. Uh, the cohort of first line or treatment naive patients was around 55. Uh, this adds to fairly limited data on patients who are receiving venetoclax plus obinutuzumab, which all of these patients received in a frontline or treatment naive uh, setting. Uh, nice to see was that the, the excellent efficacy seen in CLL13 and CLL14 uh, with this regimen was recapitulated in an off-trial setting. So our, our results were quite similar there. Likewise, in the relapsed but BTKI naive setting, which is gonna more closely uh, look like a Murano, uh, type of patient population chemotherapy exposed, but not uh, having previously seen a BTK inhibitor, those outcomes also looked fairly similar to the trial data and confirming that excellent efficacy of venetoclax-based approaches. However, in that third group, which was actually the largest subgroup in our patient population, the relapsed and BTKI exposed patient population, the outcomes really varied based upon the uh, whether or not there was resistance to the BTK inhibitor, whether or not the disease had progressed on BTK inhibitor or they just had exposure to the, that class of agents previously. And for those who had been exposed but not had their disease progress on, uh, really you saw outcomes that looked quite similar to patients who were BTK naive but in the relapse setting. However, in the patients who had relapse disease with prior BTK exposure and progression of disease on that BTK inhibitor, the outcomes were substantially worse with a median TTNTD or time to next therapy or death, which is analogous to progression-free survival uh, utilized in retrospective studies. This looked uh, quite similar to the, to the Jeff Jones data from venetoclax monotherapy in phase two study from a few years back uh, with medians less than two years. So a bit underwhelming in that regard. One unique or interesting aspect in our cohort was that we actually had a, a small but uh, underreported patient population that have um, not been exposed to chemotherapy. So they're BTK, they're in the relapse setting, their disease is in the relapse setting and has been exposed to BTKI before, but actually not chemotherapy, which is gonna be a more common scenario moving forward as we're in this targeted novel agent era. Uh, and somewhat surprisingly, those outcomes also were, were a bit underwhelming uh, compared to kind of the data that all comes to mind when we're thinking about using these drugs in patients that are, have never seen other novel agents. Um, so more to work to be done in that regard. As far as the, the, the factors that kind of we saw uh, have significance in impacting those outcomes from baseline uh, part of venetoclax start, the, the key one was complex karyotype, both in the TTNTD, the PFS uh, uh, analogous type of uh, outcome, as well as overall survival, supporting its assessment uh, prior to venetoclax start.